Well, looks like it's uh, fall. It's getting that time of the year where you got to winterize your camper. So that's what we're going to do today. So this is a 2004 popular 190 by Road Trek. So it's a Chevy Express van. So we'll take a quick look at uh, the instructions here. If you didn't get this with your camper, you can uh, follow some links on my uh, YouTube account here and download uh, proper instructions. So basically, they tell you you got to drain your water system, including your hot water tank and your interior tank if you have a popular 190, and also your exterior tanks. So there's a, a few different things you got to do. So let's just walk around the van and I'll show you where everything is that's water related. So if you open all the doors on the side here, you see that there's a sewer drain, there's a grey water tank on the uh, left, black water on the right. There's also a, a valve here. Let's see if I can get my paws on it. So this is how you drain your uh, main tank. So there's going to be a lot of water in there. It's kind of time consuming for that to uh, drain. There's also an overflow in the system somewhere. When you uh, fill up the tank to the max, it doesn't backfill out of the uh, filler. So that's uh, the filler for the uh, outdoor tank here. So we'll let that drain down. This model has a macerator pump on it. It's not clear to me if they all have that or not. We'll take a look at that in a minute when we've got to pump out the system. So we used it for a weekend, so we're just gonna pump it into a pail and dump it into the toilet rather than going uh, finding a, a place to dump this thing out. Got your hot water tank. So to drain the hot water tank, what we did was uh, we took the uh, anode or the cathode, whatever it is, out of here. I think it's a one inch socket. A 27 millimeter fits on it. It's probably not metric. So that needs to be done. You can take a look at your uh, blow off valve and see if it's working or not. I would say that this one's probably seized, so we never use it, so we're just gonna leave a V for the time being. And uh, although I do need to do something to keep the threads from rusting on the tank here, it's, uh, it hasn't been used in five years, I guess. When my parents bought this camper, it was um, winterized, but for whatever reason, someone turned on the hot water and filled the hot water tank with antifreeze and it ate the anode down to nothing. There was only like the bolt sticking out here and it was a total mess. So we had to take all the strainers off of all the faucets and try to get everything to come out. And it uh, took a bit of time to get all the garbage out of the system. So this is the outside shower here. And then the city water connection. So we got to drain this here somehow. We'll take a, a look at how that works probably have to take off this fitting so that it uh, can drain. Let me show you the uh, thing for the hot water tank. So that sits in there to protect uh, from corrosion. You can get them fairly inexpensively. And they're pretty obvious. Uh, you can't interchange the two different types that are available. I can't remember what the difference is, but they're very obvious when you see them. You need to Take a look in the back of the machine. So the inside uh, tank is here, covered in moss. We never use it. This thing stores lots of water as it is. You don't need to carry more water inside, in my opinion. And then take all your cushions and everything and toss them up to the front for a bit so you can, when your hands are still clean, that way you don't need to touch anything. So we'll go inside and take a look again. All right, so for the water system, I guess you got your uh, water supply and your water return, your drain. So I'm just gonna take my boots off before I pop in here. So your supply, as you're probably aware of, uh, this control here, you've got a pump that manages uh, anytime the pressure drops, it kicks it in. When it's uh, enabled, Definitely remember to put all of your chemicals in a plastic bin like this. 
The uh, bleach in particular tends to leak. It freezes in the winter and squirts out. So you don't want that happening if it's sitting on its side somewhere in the uh, coach doing damage. So you got your sink and your drain here. Still got a bit of residual pressure, right? It must have an accumulator tank in this camper, which we'll see in a minute. So the pump is not on. There'll be a, a P trap here for the sink. They say to clean it. They take the P trap off and uh, dump it out. You can do it with this one, but the one for the shower is not that realistic, so we'll do something a bit different. And some more chemicals. Lysol wipes are for cleaning the fridge before you put it away. There's the shower drain here. We've probably never ever used it. But it's got a here's a P trap in here, so you want to pour some stuff in there as well. Otherwise you'd have to go underneath and like take off the P trap, which is not that easy. Take care of that. Look at that. And then in the bathroom, you've got like a, I don't know if this is really able to take a shower using that. I guess so. Never tried. And you've got your faucets. So you're gonna to wanna to pump some fluid through here. Well, you think it would drain down, but we'll find out. Then the toilet. So pretty basic. You can, uh, if you haven't used one of these before, usually you can pull it like part way to fill up the bowl with water. We have the water pump turned off right now. And then you pull it all, all the way to flush it. So we'll get back to that in a bit. Being a popular 190, it has an indoor tank, which is right there, so that's cool. If you're a skier, that uh, keep your water from freezing. It's good down to like minus 10 degrees Celsius, which, Celsius, which is pretty good. When we camp in here, when it's like zero degrees out, you feel a bit of a draft coming off the glass because it's just like naturally cold. So you would want to fill in the window cavities with something just so that they're your head is right there, so you get a bit of a chill because of that. Some kind of a storage uh, spot here. Close this first. What you'll see right here is there's a drain valve for the indoor tank. And it is open because we never use it. Dump down. So now we'll take a look under here. I don't I think this is all electrical on this side. Yeah Then here's uh, some water gear here again So we have to unplug the inverter receptacles I think these originally came with like a 300 watt inverter which is adequate for a television or something like that. But this one's a uh, thousand watts, I believe. So uh, you'll see a bunch of valves here that are outlined inside your manual. They're inside your manual. You can see they got the water tank uh, valved out. These are both closed. So when they're sideways, they're closed. When they're in line, that means the water is allowed to go through. So it looks like this is like a bypass valve that goes around the hot water tank. Although I don't think we ever get water out of our faucet when we select hot, so I'm not exactly sure how that works. So kind of killing time waiting for the uh, tank to drain. There's another valve down in there. I haven't taken a look to see which position they're supposed to be in as of yet. So uh, I'll go over that, flip it back on. This is the selection between indoor and outdoor water for this big valve here. You can see that the line kind of goes across the aisle over to the other tank. And uh, apparently it's... Well, that's neat. So it's a valve. It's got three ports on it. So it's uh, selecting the way the water flow is. Alright, so uh, 
We're going to have to pump out the gray and the black water tank here in a second. And uh, I'll just check over the valves here and go over what you need them set at as well. Alright, so it's uh, pretty straightforward how to set up the valves. I've never really looked at them to know what they do. But this top valve here goes to the outdoor shower for hot water, which comes off the hot line. That's sort of pretty uh, intuitive there how that works. Then the other valve down back there is uh, for the cold water outside. So you want to keep these closed most of the time. I found that we had some very stagnant water trapped in here before because this valve was left open and it filled up with water. Luckily it didn't split a, a piping or anything but uh, that was a, a close call for us. Then you leave this set up for the uh, summer mode so because you're going to be uh, drawing two gallons of antifreeze out of the uh, tank as part of the winterizing. So uh, then you obviously you do not want to get any antifreeze inside of the hot water tank. I guess that it'll screw up the anode or cathode or whatever it is. And uh, it'll contaminate all your piping full of these metal chunks and it's a pain in the butt to get rid of them. So you'll, uh, like I said, you close these valves the hot and the cold inlet for it and uh, this valve is going to be open which is also the uh, the winter mode basically well, the winter mode turns off the uh, hot water tank so uh, if you do have a situation with your uh, getting any antifreeze in your hot water tank you'll have to take all of these uh, mesh screens off and pump tons of water through here to uh, get the garbage out so now we'll go outside of the vehicle here and uh, pump out the gray and black water tanks. It should be under five gallons in there. It's really, we don't use very much water when we travel because you can see we don't use the shower. And uh, yeah, you'll see anyway, not really <laughs> necessary to take a close look at it, but just going to be a bunch of blue water because of the chemicals that we uh, put in it. All right, slight change of uh, order of operation here. So it's been about 10 minutes and the water is done draining out of here. So we'll just close that valve. Took a look at uh, over here. So what you've got is this valve here is for filling the tanks from the city water. So that would normally be closed. Then, uh, I think there's a check valve in here, so you can't really uh, drain the system anyway. Or it could just be an adapter, but there's also a check valve in here. I don't know if this is original to road track or not. And uh, I don't think there's a spring or anything in there. Sorry, I guess I wasn't focusing on that. And there's this, so it's got some garbage in it. I'm always suspicious of city water anyway whenever I go camping, so I'm not generally using it because it could have like some huge iron content in it. And you uh, drain these, just leave these open. So uh, now I'm going to try to put uh, the two gallons of antifreeze in the tank. I'm going to practice with the first one and uh, show you with the second one. All right, so we're gonna put the antifreeze in here into this tank. This is not a, a perfect solution, but uh, remind yourself this is potable water, so you can't just use any funnel you've got sitting around the house. You don't want oil on it. You don't want it uh, to be dirty in any way. Let's use a, a bottle of water, kind of cut the end off on an angle, stick it in the hole, and uh, try to do this without blocking the view. But you'll see that it's on 100% catching everything but it's still better than nothing. You could probably stick some paper towel around the uh, bottle if you wanted to get it all in there. Don't be concerned if you lose uh, a bit of it because you'll know at the end whether you've gotten it all in or not. And I'm actually going to use like uh, a third jug. So I say to put two jugs into here. But uh, I'm going to fill the P-trap in the floor with another jug. So there's going to be uh, 
a bit of savings uh, with that. So just uh, put this down and get the pump set up. So uh, one thing you may not have realized is that this pump is on uh, a bit of a, a pivot. So you can actually drop this down. So what you'll do is you'll take out the cotter pin here, tuck that up out of the way, pull this out and push the pump down. So if you're pump was broken in the sewage system you could pump drop this down and somehow disengage that pump you probably got to turn it a quarter turn or something and pop it off so I don't know how much of this is like the factory original from Road Trek but uh, again get a, a pail that's not full of grease or something because you're going to be dumping this in your toilet And uh, it's not going to be obvious to see, but there's a, a little toggle switch on the right-hand side of that opening in there. So we'll see what comes out. Of course, I need to open the black water tank first. So you can see it's pumping pretty good. Might be more than uh, I thought in here. I'm not sure if this is damaged to pump or not. So now I got the uh, gray water coming. Nice stuff. Shouldn't be too much in here, I would think. We'll find out. I'm gonna have to let the foam subside here and finish pumping this out. Plus, if it's completely full, <laughs> it'd be a bit challenging to bring it through the house and uh, pour it out. So anyway, you're gonna pump that out. And then at that point, I recommend you pour like half a gallon of antifreeze down into here and pump out some more because you don't want any uh, water in the pump system because that could uh, damage it. So uh, we'll get to that in a, a few minutes. All right, so we got a, another half pail of water out of the gray water tank into the pail. And now I've got the uh, gray and black water tank valves open right now. I'm going to pour the uh, antifreeze in here to, uh, for two reasons. One is to, uh, for the P-trap that's under here, so the gases from the tanks don't come into the coach. That needs to be uh, any water displaced with the antifreeze. And also for this to go down into the pump and fill the pump cavity with uh, antifreeze as well. This is the only trap you need to do that. Uh, the other option would be that I could run the... Uh, shower and just run it into here but that could be a bit messy so hopefully this is a bit cleaner and this stuff has got a dye in it which is not great i find that it contaminates everything it gets on So this should be going right to the pump cavity right now. Even in the spring, you'll find that there's uh, more dye floating around. Like I put quite a bit of bleach in the uh, water tank after doing the, like bringing it ready for spring. And I think it washes out a lot of the, uh, the dye the water ends up kind of foamy and it's kind of strange. Fit this thing back in here. It's going to be a trick. 
All right, so now we'll go back outside and uh, run the pump a bit more till we're happy with the color of the water coming out of there. All right, so uh, before I pump this out, I will say that this video does not include how to properly flush the black and gray water tanks. I suppose you're supposed to fill them up with water and flush them out somehow. And I've never done that, and I noticed that there's a fair amount of black solids that are pumping out with the other material, and that's quite likely my fault. I'm not complaining, but I just let you know that is the case. So we should see some uh, pink in a minute here. Yeah, it's not really obvious. But that foam seems to be uh, associated with the uh, fluid that we're the antifreeze from my experience so we put a, a gallon in and it would have had to go to the lowest point which is the pump so at, now we know that we've pumped out any uh, water that was in the pump chamber so uh, we'll start doing some work on the inside all right so there's two objectives with the sink one is to uh, flush the uh, fresh water line and also to fill the p-trap so what I'm going to do is turn the pump back on you can hear the pump is uh, on the left it'll keep kind of running because it's uh, just pumping air you need to open a faucet for it to purge so I'll have some water coming down here perhaps I should have done the uh, p-trap for the floor last So you got like pink foam like crazy here right now. So the uh, the pump is all primed up. You know that it's full of uh, antifreeze now. Like I said, that foam is uh, characteristic of uh, the antifreeze. So I'll pump this uh, a bit more. I guess you could put in the plug and then fill it up with half a gallon or something. Then you know for sure how much you've flown through flu <laughs> that's a funny word yeah, I flowed through here not flown or flew flowed now I don't put the cover back on because it drips pink onto the cover and it stains a bit then you got to bleach and wipe it off and battle to get rid of it So that uh, task is done in my opinion. You can also take a look at the uh, test thing here. I don't know how well it works in this one. It says our battery is fantastic. The holding and the gray are low, the fresh is low. Looks like you need to get some propane as well. Yeah, use the furnace for uh, two days so it uh, goes through the propane fairly well. So, uh, there's a way to get a light on the pump or not, but there's a screen in here you could service that. Again, I don't know how much of this is the original road track or what's well, been replaced over the uh, years. Now that the rig is 15 years old. So now for this, you can, like I said, you can pull on this lever here and just go to like the first stage. And eventually uh, you'll get the pink coming out. So there you are. And you could let it sit there, or you could preferred options is to dump it. So that means we haven't run out of uh, antifreeze in the uh, exterior tank yet because the uh, the pump stopped running. So that's a, a good sign for that. Now. I've never used this thing. I don't know what's going to happen. Just uh, bear it with me while I get organized. I hate to have a thing that I never use actually uh, damage the camper. So I'm going to turn on the, uh, the hot and the cold faucets here.
So again, you can just uh, witness this until you feel that you're getting this pure antifreeze coming out. I don't know what happens when you have the hot and the cold open when you've got the uh, hot water system off, to be honest. So hopefully that's not causing a problem. They really don't talk about that a whole lot. So you can just leave that in here, turn off the faucets, and just uh, drain this. You don't really need to have that sitting with pressure. Now we're going to pop over here. So the toilet has been done, the shower drain has been done, the sink is done, and the trap is done in there. So now you'll turn off the pump which is that guy there. And then just bleed off any pressure you might have. It's just gone to side to side. And I just put it down. Then after it's done dripping for some period of time, you can come back and put the uh, filler back in there or like the uh, stopper plug because if all of the antifreeze evaporated you could get exhaust gases into the coach which is not ideal so everything is good in here after you winterize it you don't need to, to do anything else so I just pop back outside one more time and we're going to uh, drain the pump one more time So you can uh, take this hose down, kind of gravity, drain the last little bit out of it, but it's going to be, it's pumping up and back down again. Get a little bit of antifreeze out of there. I need to make a little storage bin for that hose in there, something to manage the, uh, the cable as well. But uh, at this point now you just have to lift up that pipe, put the cotter pin back in, and uh, you should be all set for the winter. But always uh, read the manual before you do it in case I miss anything. And uh, let me know down at the bottom. Thank you. Goodbye.